good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us in person and for those of you who are joining us online. So glad that you could come be a part of this important business meeting. Uh, we're going to hear some exciting news tonight from our uh, coordinating committee about um, the vision for renovations, and I'm sure that's why you're here. And as I was thinking about how this meeting would go, I was thinking about my family and how we try to make a decision on eating lunch. And it goes something like this, where you want to eat. Oh, I don't care. Anything's fine. Until someone says, how about this? And someone says, oh, no, 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 I don't like that. I like that. I want, how about this? And someone else says, no, no, I don't want that. But I don't care. Anywhere you think is fine until you see, until they name something. And there's just four of us. And we can't make a decision on where to eat lunch sometimes. And sometimes we just, I, I don't know, we roll the dice. We let the kids decide or something like that. But you know, I know that the spirit of us coming together, you're going to see some things and hear some things. And it may not be exactly what you are wanting to see or wanting to hear, but it's not Burger King. You can't have it your way. Because if we took a vote on the color of the carpet, we would have, we'd be here until January, next January, right? So you're going to hear from the, a, a vision of it, and it's not a, a you know, you, there's not going to be a discussion time tonight. There's going to be a time for you to do that later on. We want you to see the vision and hear the reasons why and meditate on it and pray on it. and kind of Because uh, you, you've seen it for five minutes. There's people who've been five months. They've been praying over this and dwelling on this. And every decision has been thought through. Every minute detail has been thought through. And so just want you to remember that, that we trust the committee and what they're bringing to us because they have spent so much more time on this than any of us have. So I just want to say right up front, thank you to the committee for all of your hard work. You guys have had conversations. That's good. Right off the bat, you get applause. That's great. They've been on car trips to go look at other churches. They've looked over this, over that. They've talked to a bunch of people. And I'm just excited as we come to think about the vision for the future and what Parkway could be. And um, I'm excited for you guys to come hear this, hear this report. Um, so this is a business meeting. So we're going to start with a word of prayer. And then we're going to hear from Billy Foster. is going to come read the minutes from last, um, last, it was actually last month's business report. And then we'll do a little bit of old business when we get to new business, then we'll hear the presentation from the committee. After that, we'll go into uh, the financial part, and we will end our broadcast because we don't broadcast our financial stuff on the social media. We'll end the broadcast, then we'll have our financial report for the month of January, and then I'll have some closing thoughts about uh, you know, the vision of looking forward versus backwards and how God moves us in a direction, and then we'll close in prayer. So that's how this is going to go. So why don't we start with a word of prayer. Would you join me, please? Father God, we come before you so excited about your church. God, we just said it's your church, not my church. It's not our church. That means it's what you want, not what I want. It's what you think matters, not what I think matters. And so the temptation, God, is for me to say, yeah, but I would rather, and then I just need to stop myself and just stop right there and say, that's, no, that's not right. It's what, what you think. And what you want, it's your future for your church that matters. So God, I'm just excited to see a part of how you're moving tonight. And I pray, Lord, that we would have open minds and open hearts and open spirits to hear, that we can take with us and meditate on it. And we'll have a time to have comments and to, and to have an opinion. And, but tonight, God, we just want to hear in the heart of others who've been praying on this and meditating on this. Lord, I pray that we would honor you um, with how we respond to you and your leading for the future of your church. And I'm just honored that I get to be a small part of it. And I think that we are all honored that you've called us to be a small part of this, the Parkway family, the body of Christ. And I pray that you would just direct us during this business meeting, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask Ms. Billy Foster to come and read the minutes from our December business meeting. Parkway's regular monthly business meeting was held January the 27th with Brother Matt Megginson moderating. The minutes of the previous meeting were read and approved. In the absence of our treasurer, Dennis Dean presented the financial update for the month of December. He reported that our monthly giving had exceeded our monthly expenses by more than $47,000. This is primarily due to the continued COVID-19 pandemic. 
As you are aware, we have not been able to operate various ministries as we normally would. In other business, Mike Settle, chairman of the personnel committee, brought a unanimous recommendation to the church that Daniel Sanders be elected to serve as our new Family Life Center director. After his nomination, Daniel was given the opportunity to share his personal testimony. It was also live streamed on Parkway's website for those who could not be here in person. Following his testimony, a time of questions and or comments was given. In-person members were then handed paper ballots on which to cast their votes, and our online members were encouraged to vote by email no later than 8 p.m. that night. The voting results were to be announced the following day through our church email. If elected, Daniel Sanders was to begin serving Monday, February the 1st. In closing, Brother Matt gave us a quick update on the planned renovations to our, our worship facilities. He said there should be a report coming in a few weeks from the coordinating committee, and there was no further business conducted. Thank you, Ms. Billy. You have heard the minutes read from the last business meeting. If you would approve them, would you please say aye? Opposed? Um, so we'll go into old business. Uh, Billy read that at the end of the last meeting, we, uh, we gave people a couple of hours to vote uh, for, the, for the calling of, of Daniel. Uh, we had probably 27 people voted by email, and we had over 100-something people vote in person, so about 137 votes, something like that. Uh, Daniel's approval rating was 98%, which was a lot better than my approval rating. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I really think, I, don't, I could ask Bobby Webb, I don't know, B better than yours, Bobby? Bobby's saying, yeah, better than his. I mean, good job, Daniel. I mean, you know, but uh, we're excited. Daniel's at, he's already here. We already got him involved. We're training him. He's running media already. So next thing you know, he'll be sweeping the floors. I don't know. No, he's already done. So we're excited, Daniel. That he's, he's had a busy week, and he's already getting broken in, and uh, he's, uh, he's already dreaming a big dream about what we could use through our Family Life Center and do so much more than we've ever done before, so much more than I've ever done before. And I told him, sky's the limit. Think big. And he is. So it's going to be a blessing to our church, Daniel, so we're welcome. So that's all the old business. I just want to give you a report from how we ended the last meeting into how we move forward to this meeting. So we'll go into new business. And the first thing on the agenda is to hear from our coordinating committees. I'm going to turn it over to Melody and others. I think I will take this out if I can. Um, all right. Well, we are glad to come and share with you tonight. And uh, I have just kind of been uh, the liaison with our committee as a staff person uh, to work on some projects around our church. And uh, none of which have been as big as this one. But um, that's why I am up here. And as we begin tonight, I just want to read from Exodus, starting in just chapter 25. And this is where God is giving the people of Israel instructions about how they should build the tabernacle while they are in the wilderness. And these are God's instructions. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites to take an offering for me. You are to take my offering from everyone who is willing to give. This is the offering you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. Fine linen and goat hair. Ram skins dyed red and, and manatee skins. Achaia wood. Oil for the light. Spices for the anointing oil. And for the fragrant incense. And onyx along with other gemstones for mounting on the ephod and the breastpiece. They are to make a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell among them. You must make it according to all that I show you. The pattern of the tabernacle as well as the pattern of all its furnishings. All right, I'm going to skip a little bit and I'm going to 
go into his details about the table. You are to construct a table of Achaia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding all around it. Make a three-inch frame all around it and make a gold molding for it all around its frame. Make four gold rings for it and attach the rings to the four corners at its four legs. All right, I'm going to stop there. That's the table. Then the tabernacle. I'm going to skip over. You are to construct the tabernacle itself with ten curtains. You must make them of finely spun linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn with a design of cherubim worked into them. The length of each curtain should be 42 feet and the width of each curtain six feet and all the curtains are to have the same measurements. And I could keep on reading through chapter 35 of Exodus of all of God's instructions for how he wants his tabernacle to be done. So this project, as I was thinking through and thinking about details and sometimes wondering, oh, you know, is all of this really important? Like the colors, the this, the this, uh, what's going to go here or there? And then I'm reminded, well, God certainly thought it was important. God was certainly specific about his place of worship, and he was not a, a builder who used cheap materials. <laughs> he used the finest materials. So as we think about uh, going into revamping and our worship center, um, God was very detailed. He used fine materials, and it does matter. It does matter. Our facilities show um, that we care. They show people that we care. Just like in your home, when you take care of your home, and you care about it, it shows your family that you care. Uh, it adds to the atmosphere of, uh, you know, the environment of just feeling at home, just feeling a piece of tranquility in being in the space. And it just shows honor for God's house of worship. And uh, we have a pamphlet that we're going to give out to you shortly. But I just want to, that's not it. <laughs> it's back here. I just want to read uh, what it says on the front. It says, do you remember when? And it has 1995 on the front. So it says, do you remember when cell phones were used only for calls? When Braveheart won Best Picture? When you learned the Macarena? Uh, when Amazon sold its first book? When Bill Clinton was president? or a stamp cost 32 cents, when the average cost of a new house was $113,150, and Parkway Baptist renovated the sanctuary with teal, mauve, and gold. All right, so, uh, and then it says 2021 this way. Uh, so we are looking ahead to the future, and... Uh, you know, we want to honor God in that. We want to think about um, what will stand the test of time. And so with that, we have given some consideration as a committee to those ideas, to that, to that thought process. And uh, so we're coming to share that. But before we get into showing you the pictures and different things, uh, I'm going to let Jolene, who is uh, in, in charge of this committee, to come to share some of the rationale behind the direction the committee has gone with this concept. So, Jolene. Hi, everybody. So good to be back in, in this house, in Parkways, in the Parkway family. And I can't tell you how much I've missed being here. Um, 
But I want to say that I just appreciate everyone's prayers. I am cancer free. <laughs> and um, I uh, have had several tests that come out the best they could come out. I am not metastatic cancer. I am not hereditary cancer. I've had DNA and that kind of thing. I did not have to have chemo. I didn't have to have a colostomy. So all of those things were huge. I didn't lose my hair. Well, I'm losing some hair, but that was because of the, <laughs> the big surgery, but I didn't have to take chemo. So I just want to say thank you to um, you guys, but thank you most of all to a God that heals. And he uh, was beside me all the way. There was not fear because I knew where I was going if, I, if it turned out bad. So just um, know that I'm, I'm humbled. I'm not telling you any of this to brag. I'm humbled. Anyway, it's not about me tonight. I want to get to the good part. Um, we want to share what we've been looking at for the last few months. And I'll have to say, Melody is not our Leah. She's not just a liaison. She is a leader, and she has led this, um, this committee into kind of, uh, she's, she's done the legwork, and she's called the meetings, and she's done all those things. So I want to give her credit. Um, I've talked to her many times, but um, she's the one that's, that's been head. Um, but the, in, in getting the concept, we... Like uh, Brother Matt said, we did some looking at some other churches. We've done a lot of talking to other people. Um, one of the churches that we went to visit, we were very um, inspired by because they have an architecture that is very similar to our architecture. And um, actually, Brother Matt and Brother Allen got to go with Melody and I uh, when we went. Um, I think there was somebody else. Forgive me if I forgot who else went, but anyway, we went and we were inspired by the elements that were used uh, in the decor. Um, we um, um, noticed that they had used um, natural elements and neutrals, and it wasn't bland. It was comfortable. It was worshipful. It was all of those things that you'd want in a sanctuary. And um, the elements that they were using were stone, wood, iron. Um, and all of these things are, are elements that come out of nature. And so it just felt so comfortable. And we um, took notes and we took pictures. And we got to studying things from other things that we had seen. I know Melody had spent hours and hours on the internet looking at windows, at different elements of architectural design. And we got together and kind of put together um, some things that we could incorporate in our church. And so what you'll see tonight will be um, some ideas that we pulled from uh, these churches, these pictures that Melody had seen. and. Um, they're not the final thing. Um, as you'll see, we will probably make some, more, some adjustments to the baptistry window and uh, the windows here. Uh, so just keep an open mind and just see kind of the things that we're looking at doing. Um, and I, I, think, I think our concept is something that we want to incorporate um, because it is, because it's neutral, it'll stand the test of time, and it's and it's something that, um, as far as weddings and things, um, the colors would be suitable for any color that you know a wedding might want to use. Um, and I had a little. I was talking to my daughter today. She's she's a, a art major, and I was talking to her. I said, you know, when I was in 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 design school, I remember them talking about the color um, 
um, associate, association. And she said, you mean Pantone? And I said, well, I don't remember Pantone. But she said, well, that's, that's because it's, it's an association that they uh, get their colors from. Uh, every year, new colors come out. So if you wonder why colors change, it's because it's on purpose. It's, 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 a, uh, it's a, an association where you can, um, that does the picking out for the country, in other words. So if you see that mauve and blue is in, that's because they picked it. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. So uh, as you can see, we've gone through several years of color changes. And I think that was one of the reasons why we were kind of looking at the neutrals. Um, neutrals with texture is very pleasing, and you can add color to it. Like if we ever wanted to change the color of our carpet, we could because we got neutrals. So um, when you see the pictures tonight, just kind of picture going through time with, you know, with these uh, elements that we've, we're looking at. And I think that's about all I got. Joe was a little out of commission at the beginning of this process, so that's part of why she couldn't really step in at the very beginning. But... Um, I want to introduce our committee. Okay, <laughs> I would like to introduce in, uh, all of them, and I'm just going to ask you to stand up. I'm sorry. Just <laughs> uh, we have Dana Morrow, okay, and Suzanne Harper, and Jill Rigsby, and Jill Kaufman, okay, are on our committee. So let's thank them. Um, so as Joe was saying, and one of the things I think is the heart of our staff, too, uh, this isn't just about what the committee thinks. I think this is part of the staff's vision to say that, you know, we want a place that, or our thoughts are that looks updated. It looks, it has an updated feeling, but it still retains the charm of what we have here. You know, we're not proposing that we are going to have, you know, black curtains and screens all across and it look like a concert hall. But we are trying to make, we, with this approach, it, it's, it's sort of like a chapel feeling um, that looks updated and I like the word handsome, that's the word I think of. But yet, um, it's still got tradition and it blends old and new. So that's what we were hoping for that, that this design might do. Now, we're going to share these renderings, um, and I want to share this. I, I believe God brought this gentleman to us. Uh, I, you know, it, it is a lot of work, and it's a lot for any uh, lay person to, to do. So to meet here in the middle of the week with different people. But we've had some different people come in, and uh, uh, our architect didn't even know if we would really need an architect or not, but uh, in that process, uh, talked to a couple by phone, but one fellow came in and he says, well, I have a, the way we operate is uh, we can just take some photos of your plans, uh, if you already have plans, uh, and then we do, we have a computer modeling software and we can make renderings, and that was one thing we were really hoping for, and, and and I can see now, my goodness, if we hadn't had this, it would be just be, everybody would have something in their imagination. We wouldn't know what we were talking about. And um, so I was checking into some pricing on those things, and I, I called one fellow that I got a lead on about renderings, and to do one drawing of this sanctuary was $800 by hand. That's how he did it. With this computer modeling system that you'll see, and, uh, and these weren't the first effort either. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth on the computer saying, raise this up, make that wall darker, move that over here, do this. Uh, and for $1,500, we had all these renderings done, and there's no blueprints made. This is all just preliminary, con conceptual. So we felt that that was a very reasonable sum of money to outlay to get these where we could look at them and consider them. And nothing's been done except for this. So 
I just want to explain that off the front, at the top. And I also want you to know that this is not exact. This is not like the carpets picked or the paints picked or the chairs are picked or anything. This is just kind of saying, okay, throw some charcoal gray chairs up there. <laughs> okay, so, you know, just general, this is generalization. It may look different in the end, uh, but this is just somewhere to get us going and a starting point, and the committee has, not, it has much work to do, like as far as choosing exact things, because none of that is chosen at this point. So let's just start with picture one on the screen. Oh, okay. This is just, okay, this is just kind of showing us our need. <laughs> okay, this is showing our need. Uh, and, and I think most agree, when are we going to change the floral Opry land carpet? And, and also the, you know, the things that are wearing out in all the entrances. All right, go ahead. Go ahead to the next one. And when are we going to get rid of that wallpaper that is peeling off the walls? All right, go ahead. And, of course, this is our current sanctuary right now. All right, so go ahead to the next. All right, so this is the first rendering. This is outside in the foyer area. And uh, what you see there is the use of some stone and uh, a counter that would be on rollers that could push back against the wall and be out of the way. And also on, this would be more for, you know, sign-ups and literature just as we have now. Uh, now we have brown tables, and so we would replace our brown tables with something a little more attractive and use the stone elements out there. And this is also proposing to raise that ceiling up by about two feet in the center and create kind of a tray ceiling, okay? So, and then it takes our knowing, growing, and going theme on that center wall and uh, has like a, this would be a kind of a goldy, bronzy kind of signage out of metal. That's, that's what's shown here with some seating. And then, um, uh, let's see what else. I think that's, that's pretty much it for that picture. Oh, the television uh, would be there to scroll announcements and display uh, promotional things or whatever about our church. Okay, so the next one. All right, this is the entry. And uh, the counter, this is, you recognize that... Um, there is right now a glass window where that welcome sign is, and we would remove that. That, that would be gone, and it would be flat there. And we would kind of take advantage of that curvature and that wall to sort of create a kind of a neat little welcome counter right at the doors and uh, use a combination of perhaps, you know, a hardwood vinyl-type flooring with some carpet uh, mixed together. So... That's one possibility. And again, the stone is out here in this area as well. And they've even put some coffee pots on there for us. <laughs> okay, the next one. All right, this is again the foyer. And one, one big change you'll see is the entrance to the restrooms. And this proposes to change. It's not adding on or adding additional space to our restrooms because that would be pretty involved. Um, but it does allow, uh, we have found over the years that the, the extra room in the women's restroom is not really used that much, like for weddings, as it was originally intended. So this would give three stalls in the women's restroom, and either three stalls in the men's or two stalls in a urinal, whichever. And it goes, it, it goes in and gives a dip, more private entryway into those bathrooms than what is currently there. And then in the other area, that is, you know, not, not for sure that that will happen, but that was a window that we really loved at the other church. And uh, so we, you know, thought about that as a picture window right there in our foyer, floor-to-ceiling type. And uh, so it is. All right, next one. 
All right, we've got two kind of samples in here for the, uh, the, to look at for the sanctuary. This one is the more simple of the two. But what this, is, what this does, it actually removes these two doors back here that you see, and it, it takes advantage of the little steps that the choir has always entered through to widen this a little bit, bit and give us some room to have two screens so that the focal baptistry can always be seen instead of being covered 99% of the time. Um, it takes advantage of the, of the height of our sanctuary by going up, and um, it adds some beams to the current beams as for some architectural interest and then kind of copies that pattern with the molding around the baptistry. And again, this, these are renderings. You, it's hard to tell the richness of the tone or the wood or the depth and some of those kinds of things. But uh, certainly the church that we looked at, all of those things were very captivating and very beautiful. Um, this would mean that the choir would, we would probably maybe widen this, widen right here the steps a little bit. And... Um, the choir would enter this from, that, from here rather than back behind. Um, okay, so that's a backlit, just simple cross with backlighting. And then another possibility, and there could be many possibilities, but let's look at the next one, um, is, would be leaded glass. And there's no way, as we, as we sat trying to tweak, as this man was doing his computer stuff, there's no way he could get it to look like leaded glass or real, what, real, what it really would look like. So you'd have to use your imagination. Um, but you've seen what leaded glass front doors look like, but they're clear, and it refracts the light and glistens, but it's neutral. It doesn't have any tone. And this is just one possibility we thought about iron or it could be more of a copper color. I mean, the, just the baptistry window would be a project of its own. Uh, this one just shows an iron cross with a little bit of color uh, around it. Uh, but uh, again, that would be a project of its own making. And this poor fella made lots of changes and somewhere we had to stop <laughs> asking him to do it. <laughs> And this shows uh, not to know whether our ceiling would remain as it is, or, but this shows it with a little bit of a lighter tone wood um, instead of the paint. Um, so uh, that, that's another possibility of the concept. And then the final picture would show how, what the windows would look like, possibly. Uh, the reason for uh, the change, of course, is to stay neutral in color and to go with the theme. It's like, you, you know, if you're going to go with the theme of the natural elements, you can't have too much busyness going on. And um, so this is kind of simpler, more updated, we felt, we felt, um, and copies and mimics the wood of, of the baptistry. So those are the, and that does have, we retain the pews, uh, and that kind of matches and marries all the wood tones together. So that, those are the renderings that we have, and as I said, they're not totally exact by any means, and uh, they are just the renderings that we have paid that sum of money I told you about. And so what our aim is tonight, is I guess you already received these. I didn't know they'd been passed out. You are, everybody got one of these? If you didn't, I don't know if anybody's available. Anybody need one? Uh, on the back, um, it tells you that you can respond. We'd like your comments. Our, 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 our thoughts are let this settle on everybody. Let's take it in. Absorb it. Think about it. Give us some of your comments. We have solicited a few prices, but no, by no means do we have anything comprehensive to share right now. This is conceptual at this point. And um, we just want everybody to think about it, pray about it, meditate on it, 
Give your feedback in one of the three ways that's described here. We will have a comment box down in the FLC, and those will, the, the renderings will be down there on display on Sundays. Then we're going to have them midweek and up here in the sanctuary. Anybody can drop by and look at them. And they will also be online. So you can put, fill out a comment card manually and put it in the suggestion box, or you can also email, which is that's all provided right here. Or you can use this little thing. I don't know what it's, <laughs> I'm not with it. This thing. And, and you can uh, find it. <laughs> you can find the link that you need to look at the renderings online. So that's what we wanted to share with you tonight. And you feel free uh, to approach any of us with your questions. Uh, but we're going to have a time for more questions and more information on pricing at a later time. Right now, we just want to let you think on it and pray on it and let it settle in, these ideas. So, thank you, Matt. I think Dennis will need that in just a second. So, all right, thank you. Thank you to the committee for all that hard work. It's exciting to see, and I know when you look at it, you may have, you may like one part of it and not another, and you may like some of this and not some of that. That's okay. That's a natural response. I'll echo what Melody said and said just uh, give yourself a little time to process it and then you will have a chance to comment on something and there'll be a box next to the renderings. For those of you online, you probably didn't see that you can send your email to church at parkwaybc.net. So you don't have to come here. But if you'd like to come here and look at them in person, she's already mentioned they'll be in the foyer and down in the FLC on Sunday. But if you just want to watch the renderings at home and you want to look at them on our website, you can go to church at parkwaybc.net to give your, your opinions about that. So uh, there's not going to be a discussion at this point. There'll be times for that in the future. We're not going to discuss the, bu the budget because we don't have the numbers yet, although they are in process. So uh, we're going to move now from... New business about the committee, unless you need, I think Melody has to say something else. All right. I'm going to put these up sure. here uh, so you can see them afterwards if you want to come look. I want to qualify that when I picked them up today, I'm like, that looks really green. <laughs> and so some of us, it's so funny, the computer, Jolene was looking on her computer and she was telling me, well, this color is such and such. And I'm like, no, I don't see that. And hers look totally different. And uh, so this rendering color is a little bit off, and they're going to try to fix that for us before Sunday, but it's there for you to look at tonight, okay? Okay. Thank you, Melody. Okay. So we're, now we're going to go to our financial report. So I'm going to ask Dennis Dean if he'll come. He is not really our treasurer. He is the fill-in treasurer, but he's filling in every week, so we might as well call him the treasurer. But thank you, Dennis, for doing that. So for those of you who are watching us online, thank you for joining us. We're going to sign off now because we don't want to do our financial business on social media. So thank you for joining with us, and we'll hope to, to see you on Sunday. <laughs>